Hey everybody! What's up, Facebook? What's up, Primetime Squad? What's up, Instagram? What's up, YouTube? <laughs> How's everybody doing this evening? I'm trying to see who this... <clears throat> On this Instagram, the little um, circle pic of your name is so small but i see you on here all the time fish scale do i know you personally the picture's so small i can't hardly see it but anyway welcome and welcome again um all y'all checking in on youtube please feel free to comment in the chat say hello say what's up feel free to comment on the live um review that we're doing tonight which is hey marcel what's up <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I'm like, you know, on your phone, you know, the little Instagram bubble, it's kind of hard to see, you know, who you're talking to. But thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. Um, those of y'all on YouTube, make sure you please like the video, share the video um, to your social media platform. And also feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're already not subscribed and those of you already know if you are in my local area tomorrow's the 29th um every month i always have a free cake giveaway um i do the contest usually on the first of the month but since uh the super bowl i believe is sunday the third i'm doing the contest a few days early and it's tomorrow so those of y'all in my local area y'all already know how it goes tomorrow don't forget you have all day um as long as you subscribe to my social media platforms to um send me a number one through 100 and whoever is the closest wins a free cake and if you want you can have it for your super bowl party if you having a super bowl party or whenever you need your cake so just make sure you don't forget i've been posting it the last week almost every single day reminding people that it's this month on the 29th instead of february 1st um because i normal normally do the drawing on the first so don't forget tomorrow's the day to try to win a free cake um a lot of people know i'm a personal professional custom cake designer cake decorator cake artist whatever you want to call it <laughs> whatever you want to call it but anywho and it, for those of y'all um who uh might want to follow me on my cake art page is on facebook tanya's delights slice by slice if you want to check me out over there but anyway anyway moving right along um tonight we're going to be reviewing housewives of atlanta um it's still season 11 this is episode 13 and it was titled tempers in tokyo so everybody get ready let's get this live started get my little drink y'all got y'all little drinks whatever y'all like to drink coffee kool-aid juice water <laughs> yak <laughs> but anyway anyway so, the beginning of the show, they open right up exactly where they ended off, which was Nene going off on Tanya regarding um her man Paul. Now, if y'all recall last week, I think what I had said and what a lot of people had thought was that Nene was saying that Tanya's relationship with Paul. Remember when they was at the, um, where they was pulling the, um, what do you call the fortunes? You know how you get your little fortune out your fortune cookie? They had pulled up to a place or, you know, was strolling past a place where you pick fortunes and all that kind of whatnot. And Tanya's fortune says something about, uh, her future and marriage or something. I don't even remember exactly what it said. But Nene says something like, um, or it could be somebody else or maybe not Paul or you can get married to somebody, something like that. And so what some of us might have thought was that Nene was trying to say that her relationship with Paul might not last, you know. But after watching this episode, what I gathered from what Nene was saying is that she meant that if she didn't marry Paul, like the fortune cookie, you know, if she didn't marry Paul, you know, she'll still end up happy with somebody else. I think that's what Mimi, what Mimi, why I say Mimi, <laughs> what Nene was trying to say. 
Um, but why was she still being so darn mean to Tanya? That's what I still don't understand. Like, I don't know. This is like the third or fourth episode where I thought Nene was being really mean or condescending or shady towards Tanya, who's supposed to be a good friend of hers, um, who she brought on the show. But for some reason, the last like three or four episodes, Nene has been like not too kind to Tanya. Um, so I still don't understand her overall frustration, um, with Tanya, but you know, y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But, again, it's been going on for several episodes. And then this episode, Tanya, she had got really, really emotional. Um, Nene was yelling at her, telling her, I don't give a damn about your man, your relationship. You know, basically, you know, telling her she's a non-factor and so is her man. Again. <laughs> they supposed to be friends. So, I really don't know why Nene was going so hard on Tanya like that. But... Um, I understand Nene's going through a lot and a lot of people will give that excuse for Nene, you know, be like, okay, Nene has all these problems going on. You know, Greg, he was, uh, had cancer, got surgery. Um, he's, you know, on, on the men's with trying to, you know, clear up the rest of the cancer, but he's still battling it. He's still battling the cancer. Um, I know personally what it's like to see someone die of cancer, to watch them every day just deteriorate and get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and then die. Or, you know, to see somebody try to fight the cancer. But I've never flipped out on anybody like that. Never. Especially the people who are closest to me in my circle. My friends, my sisters, my cousins, my co-workers, my church family. I just never like, and I didn't have to bury a few people who are really, including my parents, who are really close to me. So, you know, I... I I was trying to give her this, the, uh, you know, benefit of doubt before, but it's getting to the point where I don't, I don't know. It seemed like there's something else going on with Nene. And on top of that, I know everybody deals with sickness and death differently. So uh, I'm not trying to go too hard on Nene, but I do think that she is definitely directing her anger to the wrong person. Um, Nene has been pissed off at Greg. (laughs) <laughs> for some reason, like I said in my last episode, I really think Greg did not want Nene to go on this trip. I mean, it's just coming through from the little bit that we're hearing her say that he said over the phone. Like, I'm up here, I'm trying to do this, this, that, and the third, and you out there in Tokyo, Japan, you know, doing this, this. I think that Greg maybe needed Nene there with him. Even though he's on the up and up, he's not doing as bad as he used to be, you know, when he first, you know, was going through the cancer and everything. But I don't think he really wanted her there. I think that's what the big um, thing is with her and Greg. But um, I I still just think that, you know, she's misplacing her feelings and emotions, you know, towards Tanya, who also appears to be the weakest link. So I'm thinking, is that maybe why Nene is doing this to Tanya? Because I, I, I know she wouldn't be able to get away with this with, okay, maybe, <laughs> maybe a couple of seasons back, she might have been able to get away with that with Portia. But with Portia being a little older, being around the ladies for some years, um, now pregnant, um, Portia, you know, she'd be popping off. She'd be defending herself a lot more lately. Um, Candy. I know that's not going to work on Candy. (laughs) It's not going to work on Candy. Um, Not even Marlo or I don't even think Shamari. So I really feel like she is the weakest link in the group, Tanya. And maybe that's why another reason why Tanya is, you know, receiving the blunt of her anger. I don't know. Y'all again, y'all let me know what y'all think. But um, Tanya, I would like to say. She really, really, if she wants to remain on the Housewives, like, I don't know what's going to happen after this season with her. But if she wants to remain on the Housewives, she definitely needs to toughen up. I mean, like the tight, like the, uh, <laughs> the picture that I got for this live video, she needs to pull up her big girl panties. Like, for real, pull them all the way up to here. 
I mean, the same way Nene's giving it to her, Tanya needs to start giving it right back to her. I mean, I think that's the only way that she's going to put Nene in her place. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, as far as me, I don't care who's sick in your camp. I don't care if your mama, your daddy, your brother, your child, you ain't going to continually keep disrespecting me over and over repeatedly. Just disrespecting me and not just disrespecting me, but in front of the entire cast and crew, in front of America and beyond, <laughs> everywhere else this show is shown. I mean, like repeatedly over and over disrespecting her. Uh-uh, no, no, it wouldn't even work like that. <laughs> it wouldn't even work like that. But um, what I was glad to see was how Eva finally, 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 finally was trying to put Marlo in her place. Now, Marlo has been giving Eva a lot of shit regarding her style, like all the time, and I don't know why. <laughs> Like, I really don't know why. <clears throat> and I just, just realized <laughs> that my sound wasn't on for part of my live on my YouTube. So I do apologize, you guys, on YouTube. What I'll do, I'll just re-upload the rest of this later. But what I was saying was, I'm going to have to probably upload it from, probably from... Instagram. That's what I do. I upload it from Instagram. But anywho, what I was saying was, um, Marlo, finally, Eva's trying to put her in her place because Marlo has been giving her a lot of shit regarding her style, like, all the time. And the thing is, not everybody wants to dress up every single day, you know, like a runway model. And granted, granted, Eva is a true model, but still, just because you aren't in designer every day does not mean that you don't have it in your closet. It does not mean that you cannot afford it. I mean, some people like Cynthia and Eva, they just prefer, you know, the relax, kick back, you know, chill out, you know, kind of wardrobe sometimes. But... <laughs> Marlo just can't seem to accept that. Like, you have to be dressed to the nines to be around her. Otherwise, you just, I don't know. Like, your attire isn't good enough for her. But, um, mm -mm -mm. Eva Show was trying to put her in her place. Like, for real. We didn't get to hear everything. <laughs> we didn't get to hear everything. But they was going back and forth and forth and back for like an hour and a half, if not longer, on that bus ride. Um, and from what I was gathering from the other ladies, like, uh, <laughs> like Cynthia and, uh, uh, Candy and Shamari and them, they was like, <sighs> Eva was handling Marlo. She sure was handling Marlo. Hey, Chastity, <laughs> what's going on? Did you watch the, uh, oh yeah, you said you was going to watch the episode last night, right? Of the Atlanta, I actually didn't get to watch it until after I got off of work today. Yeah, I didn't get to watch it till about 3 30, 4 o'clock. <laughs> but yeah, I was just in the middle of talking about how Marlo and uh Eva had got into it on the bus. Um, I don't know what it is about Marlo. Like Again, as far as her, she always feels like she got to be dressed up in high fashion designer clothing. And everybody who ain't dressed up in high fashion clothing all the time is just not good enough for Marlo. <laughs> hey, designs, my V. <laughs> Eva was going in on Marlo. I was like, yes. Finally. Finally. <laughs> because like I said, she's been giving her shit. She been giving her shit for the longest about what she was wearing. But when she got to talking about Marlo's wig, <laughs> everybody was like, Marlo, what's wrong with your hair? Like, it's, it's just hanging. It's, it's, it's pulled all the way back. You can see all her hair, her regular hair. I mean, it was, it was a hot mess. It was a hot mess. <laughs> she has no real life. Like, Marlo has no real life. Designs by V. What happened next was Eva was giving it to her. But you know what happens when people start losing a fight? They start going real low. 
And that's what Marlo was doing. She started going real low. She started bringing her kids into it, bringing her husband into it. Like, okay, what had happened? Eva had told, okay, okay, I remember. Marlo had said something like, you need to respect your elders. And Eva was like, first of all, respect my elders? I got a husband and two children. And that's when Marlo was like, oh, yeah, you got two children by two different men. I was like, everybody on the bus was like, oh, no, she didn't. No, she, like, like, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Or Japan? (laughs) Or Japan? (laughs) I mean, what does that have to do with the price of tea? So what? She got two different kids. She act like she had, like, a whole basketball team of kids by different guys. But still, I mean, I, I regardless, that had nothing to do with the argument. Nothing at all to do with the argument. That was like really, really low. I'm like, man, she lucky Eva didn't just... Because Eva was, Eva was starting to get ratchet. I was like, I can see it coming out of her. The hood, the ratchet. I was like, oh my God, any second now, she's going to jump over that seat. <laughs> she gonna jump over that seat and snatch that wig off of Marlo's head. <laughs> but it was a mess, y'all. It was a mess. I was like, you don't have to be... I mean, she literally feels like you have to be dressed to impress every time you have to walk out the door. And granted, these ladies are on a national televised TV show. I think they all usually look pretty nice. Even when they dress down, even when Cynthia got on her Chuck Taylors and her jeans and her T-shirt tied to the hip. And, you know, Eva, you know, she's kind of dressed down most of the time, too. I don't know. I don't know. But then another thing, she started trying to go low, low about how she was dressed and bragging about what she got in her closet and what she can afford and how Eva probably borrows her clothes and she might be a model, but she can't afford none of the clothes she really be modeling or she gets it for free. <laughs> I'm like, hold up. Uh, don't Marlo usually get all her stuff from a sugar daddy? Am I wrong? Has something changed over the last few seasons? I mean, she get her cars from sugar daddies. She get her homes from sugar daddies. So I'm just going to assume, I'm just going to assume that they probably put in on her wardrobe as well. (laughs) I'm just going to (laughs) assume. But you know, y'all let me know. I don't know. I don't know who she who she messing around with now, but it's usually somebody that is not even allowed to come around the group. She never brings me in around the group. So hmm. hmm, hmm. Yeah, she should have pulled that wig off. Cause as soon as she would have brought my kids in and talking about you got two different kids or three or four or five or whatever by different people, what does that gotta do with anything? Nothing. Mm -mm -mm. And as far as that elder move, she would have got straight. (laughs) She would have got straight cursed out. First of all, that is the worst thing you can say to me is respect your elders. And I grew up to respect my elders. But if that elder is disrespecting you, um, being shady to you, putting you down, you know, things like that constantly uh no i'm not respecting that elder nope i'm a full whole grown woman and i respect who respects me elder or not elder or not (laughs) but that's just how i feel but yeah um marlo she must have i don't know she must have been trying to pull something out of eva she's she's mean and nasty she is real mean and nasty you said she steals her clothing. Oh, see, I heard about that. <laughs> I heard about that. I mean, besides the Housewives show, I don't know what she would do. I don't know what she would do without the Housewives show. That's why she uh, agrees every season to be a friend of the show. She might not have a peach. <laughs> she got a sliver of a peach because she always appearing as a friend of the show. 
But that little old, oh man. Okay, when they was arguing all on the bus, y'all. <laughs> yes, it would have went down quick. It would have went down quick. <laughs> but y'all, remember the little uh, tour lady that was on the bus? How she was looking when they was arguing? Like, she had her hand, had her phone in her hand and she was just like, doo, 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 doo. I'm like, <laughs> poor <laughs> Portia said she probably called an Uber trying to get away from them. <laughs> I was like, no, what she probably is doing is trying to call that Tokyo version of 911 <laughs> to meet them at their destination just in case, you know, she got caught in the middle of a cat fight. I was like, that poor little old lady. I cannot imagine what she's thinking about us Americans after spending all that time with them ladies mm -mm -mm. and not only are they always like disrespectful by being late but they also fighting and cursing each other out i mean that little old lady poor little old lady <laughs> she's like this ain't part of our culture this this not part of our culture <laughs> Ah, you never see model with anything twice to get her clothing from the store wear them and return them back to the store that's probably what she does too I wouldn't doubt it I wouldn't doubt it at all and a lot of people do that a lot of celebrities do that a lot of cele uh, regular folk do that I mean hell regular people do that too but a lot of celebrities they tend to borrow clothing they tend to borrow clothing they borrow jewelry they borrow cars it's nothing new but I still think that was wrong for her to throw to <laughs> talk about her kids like that. I still think that was wrong. You said even play that mom card with Shamari, Shamari. Mm -hmm. You you heard that? You heard that? I I heard Shamari. It it was kind of faint. It was kind of faint. But I heard Shamari when she was sitting behind them. She was like, uh huh, yeah. You ain't gonna try that with me. And Shamari was looking down like she was on her phone or something. But she was like, you ain't gonna try that with me. And I I believe it too, cause Shamari looks like a little fighter. She might be small, <laughs> but you don't play with those small people. Mm mm. Don't blink. <laughs> Nene has been really disrespectful designs, like, really, really to the point where I'm just like, uh, why are you so nasty? Like, why are you so nasty? I mean, but, okay, when they had got time to go, okay, um, where was they going? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Remember they was going to see the geishas? And although... <laughs> They were supposed to be going to the red light district. And although the red light district wasn't what they thought it was going to be, it, it really wasn't. But anywho, they were supposed to um all go together and everybody was coming out. And hey, Shush Trash, <laughs> what's going on? And everybody was coming out and the, the little tear guy lady... She had what she been telling them ever since the beginning when they first got there to Japan. It was. It is very disrespectful to our culture when people are late. Because basically you disrespect somebody else's time. Which, I mean, technically is probably part of everybody's culture. You're being disrespectful. You know, if you say you're going to be here at 8 and you don't show up to 10, you know, it, it is disrespectful. But I guess it's a little bit more um, disrespectful over there. And Nene, I guess she uh, obviously thinks that it didn't pertain to her. <laughs> she obviously thinks it didn't pertain to her because they sure left her, but... <laughs> Girl, Team Tamar. <laughs> yeah, definitely the wrong show. Definitely the wrong show. I couldn't, I couldn't even watch Tamar every day if she was acting like that. For real, though. For real. <laughs> Tamar be dragging it out. She be dragging it out. Mm -mm, I can't do it. <clears throat> but anyway, um, she like, okay, I'm coming. I'm on my way down. I'm on my way down. But then the tear guy lady was like, we got to go. We on schedule. Because like, okay, if you visit in a certain place and you have a tour guide and you're renting a bus, they have schedules. You have appointments. 
I mean, everywhere you go, you have appointments. It, it's, it's tourist attractions. You got to be on time. And Nene, I guess she thought that didn't apply to her. And she got real pissed when they left. She was looking crazy. She was like, is that the tour bus? And then she came out with her big old fan. <laughs> her big old Japanese fan. And she had the little chopsticks in the back of her head. <laughs> I was like, Nene was so ready to go for the red light district, but she wasn't ready to go. <laughs> She was not ready to go. They was like, uh, no, we're not leaving. Cynthia was like, no, we're not leaving. We can't leave, Nene. <laughs> Nene got left. She got left. She was so mad. They was like, well, we can send you a car. We can send you an Uber. We can send you a, you know, <laughs> maybe a hotel shuttle. <laughs> she was like, nope, nope, I'm good. I'm good. Y'all go right ahead right ahead she was what did she say she's not in a uh she said this is not a race something like that this is not a race or i'm not in a race and it's not about being in a race or racing to the bus it's about if they say 11 o'clock get your butt up at seven if it takes you four hours to get dressed and get ready i mean jeez <laughs> But, uh, 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 and I like Nene too. I really like Nene. I mean, I really like all the ladies. I really do. Um, Shamari, I was a little sure about her when she first started this season. But then after a while, I'm like, she's growing on me. She's growing on me. So I like her too. And I like Tanya. And I guess that's why I'm so like, frustrated over Nene being so nasty like this supposed to be your friend your homegirl you was bragging about her at the beginning of the tv um th uh, this season and then like almost from jump street you start being disrespectful to her and being nasty and shady and I just was like I don't know like <laughs> how you gonna bring somebody on this show and treat them like that every episode but mm. Tanya better grow some balls. She better grow some something. <laughs> she better grow some something because it couldn't be me. You was not going to keep on talking to me like that. <laughs> you said you don't like Shamari. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, she's still growing on me. She's still growing on me. I like her. But um, when she was singing to her twins, like that episode... When she called home to check on her twins and they were crying. I think her mom was watching them. I think her mom was babysitting and they were crying and crying and crying. And she just started singing. I mean, she just started singing and she wasn't even singing that long. And them babies was like, them babies was out. Them babies was out. I was like, oh, I remember them days. <laughs> you think she's jealous of Tanya? You know, you might be right. You might be right. Because remember at first, uh, I think the first time she got real shady with Tanya, I think, was it her clothes, her outfit, her wardrobe? I think where she was trying to say, um... She's not really stylish or something. When Shamari had wanted her to help her get dressed or wanted to borrow some of her jewelry after uh she had um she had won the uh fashion show. She had beat Marlo, I think, in the fashion show. And that's kind of like when it really went downhill for Nene and Tanya. So I don't know. But it's like, why be jealous? You got like so much. Going on for yourself. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's because the ladies, you think it's maybe because the ladies really like, I don't know. Like, I know y'all probably seen it before where people be like, they'll introduce somebody to someone. And for some reason, all those people start like wanting to be around that person or liking, seeming to like that person a lot more than the person who brought them around. And so maybe they then they start acting a little like a little funny. You know, I, I've seen that happen before. So maybe that's it. I don't know. 
Why all I want is she has a problem. Right, exactly. Exactly. They seemed so cool before. And then it's like, I don't know. I don't know. So, something inside me wants to say that maybe this was purposely done. Bringing her on this show. And, but who would do that? Who would bring somebody on the show and purposely treat them like that? That you would have to be really mean, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know for a storyline, maybe, but Nene already has a storyline, so I can't see her doing that. I don't know. She sees the potential in time. Mm hmm. That could be it. Yep, that could be it. And she's a beautiful person. And she seems like she seems really like a beautiful person on the inside and out. Like on the inside and out. I just hope she don't stay on this show for a few years and then turn into ugh, you know. <laughs> be like, dang, what happened to the old Tanya? Hmm. I don't know. But um Eva, uh it was crazy how Eva, okay, Eva and Marlo was going at it, you know, going off on each other, talking about each other, whoop, 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 whoop. Um, Eva's mom had called her again to let her know that they were going to take her grandpa off of life support. And I think it was approximately, I think they said they was going to do it at like 7 in the morning, I think. They said something like that. And and then, of course, you know, after you take somebody off the breathing machine, after you take them off of life support, you know, <laughs> miracles can happen. But you just kind of expect that they probably won't be around that long. So when she got that phone call, I was just like, ain't it just crazy how you could be arguing and fighting and fussing with somebody one second and then the very next second, you could be crying with them and consoling them. That's exactly what Marlo was doing. And like, it, it's it's the things that they argue over is like so petty, like so petty. And Eva's up here dealing with this. Nene's up here do, dealing with uh, her husband Greg. Uh, Eva's grandpa is. I'm I'm, presu I'm going to pr presume or assume that he's probably passed by now. Uh, I don't follow Eva on the blogs or anything like that. So if anybody knows for certain, um, please feel free to put it in the chat. Feel, please feel free. Last episode, I was like, okay, we don't know if her f grandpa passed or not because you know these shows be pre-recorded but you know i was like everybody just keep even her their prayers you know just like i always say with nene and greg keep them in your prayers too while you know he's dealing with this cancer but i'm i'm gonna just assume that he's probably passed by now but i'm not you know don't take my word for it but anyway it was just like crazy how y'all could just be fighting over all this petty mess and people is dealing with real life issues, like real life issues. But y'all know how I go. <laughs> if they want to be messy, we here for the mess. <laughs> That's kind of how it is on YouTube, too. <laughs> it's like we all complain about people being messy. But then it's like. Sometimes it's just, you know, we here for the entertainment. We here for the mess. Y'all want to be messy? We going to watch. <laughs> but <laughs> But what did y'all think about um as far as okay. Tanya um when Nene hooked up with them later after they left, like, the red light district that wasn't so red light. Like, what kind of red light district was that? Um, I don't know if y'all watch Basketball Wise, but y'all remember when they had went to Amsterdam and they visited the red light district? And there was, I mean, it was actually red lights. It was actually uh, women, ladies dressed up and doing all kind of stuff in the windows. And I, I'm not saying that that's what I was looking forward to. <laughs> <laughs> seeing some ladies kissing or hugging or, you know, making out with each other in the windows. I'm just like, 
you know, looking out for them. Like, <laughs> they expected to see a red light district. And I'm like, what the? It just looked like regular stores and storefronts. And I don't know. You been to Amsterdam Designs? Did you go to the red light district? Like, I only seen it on TV. I, I ain't been there. I ain't been there. Hey, Darrell, thanks for joining us on the ground. <laughs> we just talking about uh, the last episode of Housewives. But I would love to go to Amsterdam. I would love to go to Japan. All those places. Um, just to, you know, get to experience a different culture, a different side of the world. And they say Japan is really like New Yorkish. Tokyo is like really New Yorkish. You said it was horrible seeing the women in the glass door. <laughs> I don't know. I think I would just I don't know. It's like not like you really like it would, you know, upset you if you really didn't get to see it. It's just about seeing the different side of the world and the different things that they do. Like we can't do that here. We can't not where I'm at. <laughs> not in the Midwest. <laughs> That's some underground stuff. <laughs> Ladies all dancing half naked in the windows while people driving by, walking by. No. <laughs> oh, wow. That sounds wonderful, Europe. That sounds wonderful. I'm just, I want to go overseas like that. I'm just kind of hesitant because of some of the things that I hear that be going on overseas. And I know some people are like, okay. You have to have faith that nothing's going to happen, that she's going to be okay. Just like flying on an airplane. I've only been on an airplane four times. And each time I get on an airplane, I'm like, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, please protect me. <laughs> I'm like, where's that prayer oil that my mom and them used to put on us in church? <laughs> That's how I feel every single time I get on a plane. So imagine how I probably feel about going overseas. But anyway, I'm gonna do it one day. I'm gonna do it one day. <laughs> but yeah, Nene was like, "Go ahead, y'all have fun, you know, whatever." And they went to the so-called red light district. They did karaoke. Um, went to par oh dang, you done been everywhere. Shoot, sure. I need to hook up with you. Where y'all going next? <laughs> like, where y'all going next? <laughs> but did tell me y'all, okay. For y'all who watched the show, did y'all see the karaoke scene where Shamari um, was singing? They was, um, I think it was Nene. Yeah, Nene has suggested, uh, was it? No, it wasn't Nene. Who suggested that they sing Understanding? I think it was Nene. She was like, um, I remember that song that used to be my favorite song, you know, from Escape. And I want to sing that song for karaoke. And Shamari, I swear, she almost sounded better than the actual member in the in Escape when she was singing that verse. I was like, dang, is that Shamari? I mean, I know Shamari can sing. And she did out-sing Candy for the singing contest. <laughs> but Shamari can really sing. And then Candy, when she hit the high note. Like... That song is everything to me. That song, back in the day, Understanding, that was like one of my favorite songs of theirs. And every time Candy hit that high note, I'm telling you, <laughs> I'm telling you, I would get chills every time Candy would hit that high note. And she still got it. <laughs> she still got it. You said you go on Friday. We are going to Mexico for my birthday. Oh, cool. Have fun. Have fun. I wish I could go somewhere warm. I really do. It's so cold here. It was... Man, we went to the gym earlier. It was so cold. I'm like, why do we choose to go to the gym today? <laughs> and then, you know, when you come out the gym and you be... Your pores be open from sweating and stuff. And we came home. I mean, got outside. Run into the car. I'm like, oh my God. I should have just stayed at home. But... We got our workout in anyway. <laughs> but after Nene, okay. Tanya. Huh, Tanya without the backbone. Um, I don't think that she should have 
pull Nene to the side to talk to her again about that incident. I mean, I understand her feelings was hurt, but if you're going to pull somebody to the side because your feelings are hurt, you need to check them on that. And Tanya, it was not trying to check Nene. Instead, Nene start disrespecting her again. Like, how many times can you tell your so-called friend, I don't give a damn about y'all relationship. I don't give a damn about your man. I could care less if y'all make it or not. I can, I was just like, this supposed to be your friend. This supposed to be your homegirl. This supposed to be... <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> if I'm gonna pull you to the side, I'm like, man, what the what the hell is wrong with you? Don't you ever disrespect me like no, see, see. See. <laughs> Everybody ain't built that way. <laughs> everybody ain't built that way. <laughs> it is sad, but everybody ain't built that way. Some people just let people talk about them, disrespect them, walk all over them. Mm-mm-mm. I don't care how big a star you are. Nope. Nope. It had. I, it probably was because you know the producers, they be setting people up for stuff all the time. All the time. Like, we need y'all in this next scene. We need y'all to hype it up. We need y'all to. We need some action. We need some. So I know how the producers do. But again, if I'm going to pull you to the side, it ain't going to be, well, I just didn't under. Well, why you didn't? Well, girl, take your little skittish butt back over there and get on that bus. Because Nene again read her again. And then Tanya was like, well, I'm just hoping that we can, you know, coexist and not argue, you know, for the sake of Eva and her, uh, you know, her uh, girls trip for her bachelor, you know, bachelorette party type of girl trip, whatever the heck they calling it. But no, mm -mm. that's what I would have done. <laughs> I would have checked her on that. But um I don't know. Nevertheless, you know, the ladies they had fun, you know, doing the karaoke. And after that, I think was that after that when uh when uh Eva, yeah, when she actually had got the phone call. And I was like I I don't know. I just, I just feel some type of way. Like, I just feel some type of way about that. <laughs> Am I the only one? Like, do you treat your friends like that? Like, regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless who's sick in your camp, who's ill, who done got hurt, injured, I mean, to constantly treat your friend like that? Again, Nene and Greg is going through some stuff. But a lot of people go through that and much worse every day. And you're, you're not just supposed to treat your friends like that. I don't know. I don't treat my friends like that. <laughs> I don't know. I think Nene probably needs therapy. And she's probably the kind of person who probably won't get therapy. Not in this case. Not in this situation. Um, not saying that she's never had it before. But I think maybe her and Greg might need to see some counseling. Because cancer is like... It is... Ugh, it is like one of the worst things that can happen to somebody. Cancer. It's like probably one of the worst things that people... That you have to live and suffer with and die from. It's... And it seems like everybody eventually gets it. It seems like everybody eventually gets cancer. Everybody you know. Somebody got cancer. But I don't know. Again, y'all let me know what y'all think. Um, Tanya, I, she needs to grow some back, a backbone, some sacks, some something. I, I just think she needs to toughen up for real. And let Nene know how she really feel. That's what I think. But mm, don't get me wrong. I still like Nene. <laughs> I still like Nene, <laughs> but I just think that she she's just doing too much. 
She's just doing way too much. <laughs> but y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. Um, next episode, I think for I think when I saw the previews, I think Nene had actually broke down in the next episode. I don't know what had happened. Um, I don't know if it was something to do with Greg. Or if it had something to do with Tanya or one of the other ladies. But Nene, it looked like she was breaking down next episode. So I'm looking forward to seeing that episode. And you said the producer said... Oh, hold up. For some reason, um, I think they uh, hid your comment. Let me see. That's where Phaedra got the sex dungeon from. Oh... Okay. You mean candy? In that case, Nene was too aggressive. Yeah, she was. She was way too aggressive. Much too aggressive. <sighs> it's sad. But anyway, I'm just hoping that going forward, Tanya speaks her piece and she puts her foot down. <laughs> do something somebody need to school her one of them other ladies need to school her on this trip like for real for real for real <laughs> but anyway y'all um for those of y'all who seen uh if bill street could talk if the weather here is not bad on wednesday because we supposed to be getting some bad weather at the end of this week but I'm hoping the weather is not going to be bad on Wednesday. But Samantha is going to be with me. We're going to get together again for our sisters um, from another Mr. Movie Review uh, segment. And we're going to do uh, a review on If Bill Street Could Talk. And it's going to be kind of crazy. So y'all make sure y'all tune in because <laughs> me and Samantha had total different experience with this movie. Total different experience. <laughs> and I'm not going to say which one of us liked it and which one of us didn't. I'm not going to give y'all no details. But y'all know Sammy is crazy. <laughs> So, <laughs> for y'all that has watched our one of our sisters from another Mr. Um, segment, y'all have to tune in. It's going to be approximately around 5.30 p.m. And that's if the weather holds up. So, let's pray we don't get no bad weather because we've been getting snow like every week. Either snow or ice or sleet or something like almost every week. So, hopefully, um, I'll see you guys Wednesday um, if not, I'll probably come to you guys anyway, just to let you know, we'll, we'll talk about something, but yeah, hopefully we'll be doing a review on, um, if Bill Street could talk for those of y'all who haven't seen it, you got tomorrow to see it. You got all during the daytime Wednesday to go see it. Um, so you can guys, you know, interact with us and let us know what you thought about the movie. It's been a lot of, I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. I've been watching like the uh, blogs and stuff and, you know, watching reviews and seeing what other people had to say about the movie. And some people really liked it and some people was like, Ugh. It was, uh, <laughs> but anywho, anywho, I want to know how you guys felt about that movie, and it is based off a true story, so keep that in mind. It was based off a true story, but anywho, I'm gonna let you guys go so I can get unready to get ready to go to bed, so I can get up and go to work in the morning. No problem, device by V. Thank you, I appreciate you too. Yes, the weather. That's why I said I wish I could go somewhere warm. Cause you talking about going to Mexico? <laughs> I would love to get out of here and go somewhere warm, but it's it's like freezing up here. It's freezing up here. But anyway, everybody on Instagram, everybody on YouTube, everybody on Facebook. Thanks for.